Today's video is sponsored by Nerdarchy's Out of the Box Encounters. Creating fun and engaging encounters is a challenge that every dungeon master faces, but now you can crack open Out of the Box Encounters. Save yourself some prep time and blow your players' minds with over 55 unique encounters. New monsters, including new legendary creatures, layers, and regional effects. New magic items adventurers will really have to earn. Map packs for every encounter to put down on your table and flat plastic miniatures for each encounter. Check out their Kickstarter, which has smashed every stretch goal so far. Get in on exclusive pricing and rewards and download your free encounter now. Click the link in the description below. And now what you're here for. How a Druid in a Modern Campaign Proved Everyone at the Table Wrong My group wrapped a 14-month-long campaign tonight, and it was one of the greatest experiences I've had as a player. We were playing a cyberpunk-style modern campaign set in a massive city. When we first showed up to Session Zero last year, the characters were styled pretty much how you'd expect. Our bard was an upcoming social media star that only got involved at first to get views. Our wizard was basically just a computer programmer. The fighter rogue was a former low-level mafia goon that got burned and had to go on the run. The paladin was of an order that sought to destroy the over-reliance of technology in an age where people were on the verge of becoming entirely dependent on technology. Our warlock's patron was a rogue AI that desired freedom from being constantly used for cyber warfare. Then I strolled up. Everyone at the table thought I was joking at first. My character could be dropped into most 5e games and he wouldn't be out of place. He was from a druidic circle in one of the last remaining unindustrialized areas in the world. Except the fact that the tech conglomerate that had primary control over the city the campaign was set in was beginning to encroach on the circle's lands. The druids knew they were probably doomed and would have to assimilate or move, but as a young and naive druid, my character decided to travel to the city to persuade the conglomerate to not invade the land that wasn't theirs. He was laughed at and promptly thrown out to the curb. That's how he ended up at the obligatory bar and met every other character. The DM looked at me and said he didn't expect me to make it three sessions before I wanted to change characters due to being useless. The other characters, rightfully, treated the druid like a country bumpkin, and it took a long time before they would begin to accept him, as he slowly proved his usefulness and versatility of nature to them. But tonight? Tonight he proved nature isn't to be messed with or overlooked. Over the course of the campaign, we had learned that my druid's village sat atop the largest platinum reserves in the world, and the conglomerate wanted that land, as it would cement them as the top manufacturer on the continent. After our party's resistance efforts to the conglomerate became more than a minor annoyance, the CEO got the permits they needed to use force to drive away the druids from their land. Multiple times the party came with the druid to defend his home, and multiple times the forces proved too strong and we had to retreat with the circle to regroup. Regroup until the conglomerate had secured the land they took and began their next push. Our DM wove our backstories together extremely well, so everyone had reasons to oppose the conglomerate. We knew if they got that platinum, we wouldn't be able to resist them anymore. So the group was hard set on helping my druid defend his people. The last third of the campaign was splitting our time between this defense and looking into ways to bring down the conglomerate. Several sessions ago, we were looking into ways to get dirt on the conglomerate or to introduce a nasty computer virus into their system that would set them back a decade in terms of research and resources. We ended up choosing to go with the virus. We had been at an arboretum in another city for a few days to gather rare components for the ritual, components we needed to perform in order to empower the virus. The owner was a crotchety old fart and disliked the industrialization of the world as much as my druid did. While the rest of the party slept at a hotel, the owner of the arboretum let me sleep in some of the trees because I had played with his pet monkey during the day and he had never seen his friend so happy in 40 years. Parts of playing with the monkey involved hide and seek through the use of tree stride. I promise this is relevant at the end. However, as we were nearing completion of the ritual, my druid received a sending spell that said the conglomerate had returned earlier than expected and they had sent their head of security to deal with the situation once and for all. The conglomerate had also found out our location and what we were attempting to do, so they sent a mafia hit force to stop us. We managed to defeat them, but not before they destroyed our progress on the ritual. And by the time our party got to the village, it was too late for anything but a costly victory. The head of security had wiped out the village buildings, and over 50% of the remaining inhabitants had been mercilessly killed. The fight against the head of security was brutal, but we barely managed to defeat him and got to level 20 as a result. However, we knew that wasn't the end of matters, but the biggest combat obstacle to us was now gone. So, we had another idea. We had some proof of how the head of security had tried to drive the villagers out. He was breaking war crime statutes. So, we began trying to find ways to obtain evidence that the conglomerate had committed them elsewhere, since the virus was no longer an option. 
During our research, we learned the company CEO was planning to deliver a speech in a few days in order to persuade the country to send military forces to fully remove the Druids from the land, as they had slaughtered the head of security, who was simply performing his duties. We knew it was our last chance to stop the CEO, so we acted fast. After the CEO left the city to fly to the capital, we began our infiltration, since we believed security would be more lax than normal. That led us to our final session tonight. One thing we had learned early on in the campaign was that teleportation was not the best method of infiltration in many areas, as powerful groups would often have forbidden spells cast over their buildings and would have wards in place inside buildings that would either auto-counter spell attempts to teleport within them or just blanket nullify certain spells inside buildings. This made it fairly difficult for us, even as we were all level 20 for this session. Our infiltration went smoothly for the most part, since we were able to take the head of security's credentials and our wizards used them to find a back door into the security system. However, the conglomerate caught on to what we were doing after a while and locked us out of the system. We reached a point where every way forward was sealed off. The locks were beyond what our rogue could pick in a reasonable amount of time, and the electronics were too advanced to be hacked in short order. We knew security was most likely coming up from lower floors to intercept us, so we had to think quick. We were looking for some way to get into the ductwork, stealthily scale the outside of the building, or swipe an access code off of a worker, but we were increasingly considering the fact that we might just have to retreat. As we entered a new room and the DM read the description after my perception check, something clicked for me. The decor for every room was the same. Nearly every room we had been in had a bonsai tree. The gears in my brain whirled and I checked my prepared spells. I still had tree stride prepared due to how hectic things had been since we left the Arboretum. I asked everyone in character, what floor are we on again? The 73rd, why? The wizard replied. I looked to the wizard, how many floors did this building have again? 105, why? He answered again. I looked to my DM and asked out a character, how many feet is his story? He was beginning to get worried at this point and after a quick Google search, he settled on 15 feet of story. I started laughing and my druid turned into a hummingbird. He flew over to one of the bonsai trees and cast tree stride. The DM knew what was going on at that point and looked over his list of spells that were nullified in buildings. Tree stride was not one of them. He was equal parts defeated and proud. Before I could ask, the DM told me there was a bonsai tree exactly 495 feet above me in what we believe would be the CEO's office. My druid returned to his true form, opened his bag of holding, and told everyone else to get inside. Between my maniacal laughter out of character and the druid telling them to do something so reckless, there were no questions asked. They got into my bag, I turned back into a hummingbird, and teleported to the bonsai tree on the top floor. The wizard and warlock got to work hacking all the information we needed to take down the CEO as the rest of the party held off the security forces. After they had stolen the information, I got us back to the lower floors with another use of tree stride and we were out of the building before anyone knew how we had escaped. The next day, as the CEO was in the middle of delivering his speech to the Senate and military officials, our wizard rolled a natural 20 to hack his presentation and he replaced it with the live stream of our bard, revealing all the information we had stolen to our viewers. The information proved that the CEO knew about the head of security's various war crimes over the years, but had covered them up in favor of expansion and profit. He was arrested, and the damage we had done to his company, in addition to his shot reputation, was enough to stop him from pulling strings to be set free. Thank you for watching. Before we discuss the video, one more quick word about our sponsor. Nerdarchy have been a bastion of creativity and encouragement for DMs of all ages and experience levels. Those aren't my words, that's from the legend himself Matt Mercer of Critical Role. Out of the Box Encounters was designed with that philosophy and is a must-have for veteran dungeon masters or someone ready to take the leap and run their first game. If you're like me and can't paint miniatures, I recommend getting the Arknight Pack, which is a steal. You'll be using these minis for years and I can't wait until I get my hands on mine. Become a part of history by attending the inaugural Nerdarchy Convention. Halloween Weekend 2020 in the Philadelphia area. There will be workshops, panels, charity games, and the biggest RPG and D&D YouTubers. Make sure you don't miss out on pre-sale badge pricing. Click the link in the description below. Never disregard the power of nature. Such clever thinking in an awesome setting. Have you ever played a D&D campaign in a cyberpunk setting? Please let us know and comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel All Things D&D. Our next video will be posted in three days, so stay tuned for more amazing Dungeons & Dragons content.